Hello and welcome to the lesson video for 4-5. This is actually the second portion of the combined lesson 4-5 notes and so we will begin with uh, the page at the top that says included side but before that if you want to go back to the warm-up there are still two questions from that warm-up that we did not cover and this might help you out with getting ready for these notes so why don't you take a look at these two questions and we will cover our answers in just a moment. First, what are the sides AC and BC called in this kind of a triangle. They have a special name in this triangle. And then also which side is between angle A and angle C. We will talk about that in just a moment. If you need more time, push pause. And now we'll take a look at what answers we should have gotten. What are the sides AC and BC called? Well, AC and BC are called the legs of this triangle, and then they also ask about side AB. That's the hypotenuse. This is a right triangle, so AC and BC are legs. AB is a hypotenuse. Now, in this triangle, what side is between angle A and angle C? That'd be side AC. All right, let's take a look at these specific objectives. We're going to apply ASA and AAS which ASA stands for angle side angle, AAS stands for angle angle side, and HL, HL stands for hypotenuse leg, and we'll talk about that more uh, in a little while. We're going to use those theorems to construct triangles and to solve problems, and we will also prove that triangles are congruent by using those three. Your only vocab term that you need to write a definition for in this lesson is included side. Previously we talked about what an included angle was, that was an angle that was between two sides or formed by two sides an included side we will talk about in just a moment uh, we can skip ahead of this one this is not in your notes so let's talk about what an included side is it's the common side of two consecutive angles in a polygon the following postulate uses this idea of an included side it's the common side between two angles basically it's the side that is between two of these letters P and Q angle P and angle Q those endpoints make up side PQ so we say it's the included side of angle P and angle Q the word included again just really means between so here's our first postulate it's the angle side angle congruence postulate if two angles of one triangle A and C are congruent to two angles of another triangle, D and F, and the included side, AC, is congruent to the included side of the other triangle, DE, DF, then the triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. So let's use that to explain why these two triangles could be congruent. Here's what you're given. We are given that KL is perpendicular, I'm sorry, parallel, mixed up my words, KL is parallel to NM. Well, that makes NL a transversal. Okay, so we're going to determine if we can use angle side angle. Here's what we know. We have KL, transversal, NL, NL and then side NM. That shape looks like a Z, creates alternate interior angles here and here that are congruent. So we have congruent angles. They share side NL. NL is congruent to itself by the reflexive property, so we have angle side. We would need the other angle to be congruent. But unfortunately we don't know that. By the alternate interior angles theorem, KLN is congruent to MNL and NL or LN is congruent to itself by the reflexive property but there are no other congruence relationships to be determined so we cannot apply angle side angle we only get angle side we would still need another pair of angles to be congruent so we cannot apply angle side angle let's try here we want to determine if we can use angle side angle to prove the triangles are congruent in example 1b well we have two congruent angles here and two congruent angles here and then they share this side but the included sides are not given to us as congruent. The included sides would be these top sides of each angle. We don't know that they are congruent. Two congruent angle pairs are given, but the included sides are not given as congruent. Therefore, angle side angle cannot be used to prove the triangles are congruent. So the answer again here is no. But we do have another congruence theorem we can use. 
Because of the third angle's theorem, I'm going to take you back to example 1b. Because of the third angle's theorem, these two angles are congruent to these two. We could conclude that the third angle in each triangle are congruent. That would give us angle here and here, the shared side, and then these two angles are congruent by the third angle's theorem. So we could say these are congruent, but not by angle side, not directly by angle side angle. We would use angle angle side. If two angles of one triangle and the include, a non-included side are congruent to two angles of another triangle and the non-included side, then the triangles can also be congruent by angle angle side. Because of the third angle's theorem, we can change it to angle angle side and it would still work. So in example two, we are going to use angle angle side to prove the triangles are congruent. All right, in example two, like I said, we're going to prove these are congruent triangles, JKL and JML. And we're given some information, and we are asked to prove that they are congruent. So let's look at the given information. We are told that JL bisects angle KLM. So since this middle horizontal segment is an angle bisector of KLM, we could say that KLJ and MLJ are congruent angles because that's what it means for a segment bisector. That's the definition of a segment bisector. We also are given angle K and angle M are congruent. So we have two pairs of congruent angles and then they share side JL. So JL is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So we could show angle, angle, side congruence. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with our first given. Segment JL bisects angle KLM. That's given to us. Now, before we restate the other given statement, this statement tells me something that I need to conclude before I can state angle K and angle M are congruent. I need to still say angle K. KLJ, the top angle of these two on the right, is congruent to angle MLJ, the one on the bottom of these two, by the definition of angle bisector. Now we can go back and say the other given, angle K is congruent to angle M. So I've shown angle, angle congruence in steps two and three. And we need to say that JL is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Since both triangles have JL as a side, they share that side, we can say this. So we've shown angle, angle, side. So that's enough to say that triangle JKL is congruent to triangle JML by angle, angle, side, steps two, three, and four. We have one more congruence theorem to talk about, and that is the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem. Hypotenuse leg, we use those names specifically because this only applies to right triangles. So we can only use hypotenuse leg if we know that the triangles are right triangles. So in our proofs, we must say that we have right angles or therefore establish right triangles. Okay, so if the hypotenuse and leg of one triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle, then the tri right triangles are congruent. But you must have given or be able to establish the fact that they are right triangles. So we're going to see if we have enough information here to conclude that these triangles are right triangles using hypotenuse leg, if they are congruent right triangles, that is. Determine if you can use HL congruence to prove the triangles are congruent. If not, tell what else you would need to know. Well, let's look here. We have a right angle here. That means both of these triangles are right triangles. We have the outer sides here that are congruent. Those outer sides are the hypotenuse of each triangle. Hypotenuse is the plural of hypotenuse. And they share this vertical leg, so we could say that the legs are congruent by the reflexive property. The triangles are right triangles, share one leg. It's given the hypotenuses are congruent, therefore the triangles are congruent by HL. Let's try part B. We have two right triangles here. We are given AC is congruent to BD. Those are each a hypotenuse of their respective triangles, so the hypotenuse are congruent. And again, they share a leg, CB. It's given that AC is congruent to DB. 
BC is congruent to CB by the reflexive property. Since angle ABC and angle DCB are right angles, triangle ABC and triangle DCB are right triangles by HL, or they are congruent triangles by HL. Okay, we've gone through the notes fairly quickly, but I do want to draw your attention to a couple things here. There weren't as many examples as we'd have liked to have had in this note packet, and so before moving on and before finishing this, uh, this portion of the notes, I'd like for you to at some point take a look at your online textbook, Chapter 4, Lesson 5, and take a look at those extra video examples. You don't have to write anything down unless you just want to, but it would be some great practice. Example 3 specifically has a really good proof that you can work through. But again, there are four lesson videos in your online textbook, and I'm going to show you and remind you how to get there, that would be very useful in helping you to understand lesson four or five a little bit better. So once again, if you go to my.hrw.com, you'll get this screen. Remember, the username is Olathe East, no spaces, no caps. And the password is Hawks, H-A-W-K-S. If you log in using that information, you'll want to click on the online textbook. You should only see the geometry one. But if you see both of them, that's okay. Just click on geometry. We're going to select chapter four, lesson five, and click on videos and activities. That's how you get to the lesson tutorial videos. If you scroll down, you'll find lesson four or five examples, one, two, three, and four. Clicking on any of these will bring up a video that you know, has some extra examples that will be extremely useful in working through these. I'm not going to put those videos embedded in this video you're watching, but that is up to you if you would like to watch those videos. They are, again, very useful, and any of these videos from the entire chapter or the entire book later on down the road this year would be very helpful if you're finding yourself struggling with some of this material. So once again, if you have any other questions, make sure you ask during class. Uh, we will do some more examples with proofs using angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg in class. Um, and again, check out those lesson videos that are out of your online textbook. Those are also extremely useful. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful, and we will look forward to doing this assignment during class.